Please stand as you are able and sing the opening hymn, It's Spirit of the Living God, number 393 in your red books. The words will also be up on the screen. may be seated. First of all, I want to welcome all the visitors today, those from Rankin and those from outside, those of you who are online. It is good to worship together. We do have some announcements. First of all, Cisna Park announcement, Halloween is tomorrow. And if you'd like to hand out candy, see the kids in their costumes and just have a good time. Please join us tomorrow. The hours are from 4 to 7. The Christmas shop is coming. It will be here in Cisna on December 3rd. And donation day, the next donation day is November 19th from 9 to 12. If you can volunteer to help either time, we'd be glad to have you. Rank and announcements. Sunday school will begin November 6th during worship. The youth gathering will take place after worship that day. And the Christmas store at Rankin is December 10th from 9 to 12. If you can volunteer to help that time, please let Ashley know. We do have some other announcements for both churches. First of all, All Saints Day is Sunday, November 6th. Please give Pastor Ashley the name of your loved one by tomorrow if you'd like a loved one honored during the service. And there's also going to be an Advent Bible study being offered at the end of November. There's an insert in your bulletin. I believe this is for both churches. Okay. So um, please see the insert for details if you're interested. We also have Wreaths Across America, and it is one way that we can honor those who have passed on who were members of our veterans, members of our military. So there's a form in the back of the church. Lou, do you want to say something else about it? No, I think you covered it all. Okay. I think everybody's been through it about these last few years. It is a great thing. 
It is. Wreaths are laid at the, um, at the plots of, of people, not just in our community, but community across America. And I have heard that the, um, the VFW and the American Legion nationally are just in awe of how many people participate in the Cisna Park area. They don't just do our little cemetery out here, but they do cemeteries all over our county. And I think at one time we even went into Vermilion County. So if you'd like to participate, please pick up one of the sheets from the back of the church. Our communion next Sunday, communion alms for Cisna, is going to be going toward the food pantry here in town. So when we have communion, if the spirit moves you, you leave a little offering up here at the altar rail. And if you choose to do so, then the money will be going toward our food pantry here in town. I don't know if Franken does the same or not. Okay. Speaking of offering, we do have the two plates in the back of the church, one for Rankin, one for Cisna. So if you have not yet put your, uh, your offering in there, you can kind of sneak back there and put it in. And I know we tried to catch you on the way in, but um, if you didn't get it, our custom here in this church, and I think in Rankin too, is you put your name on a little slip of paper, and then you put your, that piece of paper in a basket. At the end of the service, that on your way out, you draw a name, preferably not your name, but if you want to pray for yourself, that's okay too. And then you pray for that person for the whole week. And believe me, we can all use prayer. And I think that is it. Are there any other announcements? Okay. If not, then please join in the call to worship. We worship the Lord because the Lord stood by us on difficult days. Even when we weren't aware and felt alone. We worship because the Lord gives strength. Even when we feel so weak. We worship because we have been rescued again and again. Even when we are afraid that we have lost. Come and worship the God who stands with us in our darkest days, and promises to be with us to the end. We will worship in hope, seeking eyes to see and hearts to believe in God with us. At this time, I'd like to invite everyone to join me in our opening prayer this morning. At the starting line of this day, we call on your name, God of grace. As we run the race you have set before us, help us to keep our eyes on your goals, not our own. When we falter, give us fresh strength and courage. When we are fleet-footed, let us give you the glory. Keep us from wanting to win at others' expense or to count ourselves better than those at our side. All runners are your children. In the race you imagine, each one is a winner. Amen. Now please be in attitude of meditation as we hear the music from Susan Lang, His Eye is on the Sparrow.
Thank you, Susan. And that's a good lesson to remember. <clears throat> His eye is on the sparrow, and he's always watching me. Now please stand as you are able and sing hymn number 700, Abide With Me. The words are in the red, red book or on the screen. We're now moving into a time of sharing our joys and our concerns with one another to lift up to the Lord in prayer this morning. And I, and I just want to kick things off by saying what a joy it is to see everybody here this morning and to have this opportunity to worship together. So I want to lift that up today. But I also want to ask if anyone has any joys or concerns they would like to share to lift up in prayer this morning. Larry? I don't have a joy or concern, but I do have a presentation. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> well, since it's being Pastor Appreciation Month, the Seth Park Church, our appreciation for you and our love to you for all you've done for us, we have a small gift for you. Thank you. <laughs> And I just want to say, this month, both of these churches have just blessed me um, with cards and just expressions of love and grace. And I just want to say thank you for the bottom of my heart, because I truly do feel appreciated um, by both congregations and communities. And it's my, I say every week, I try to say, it's my joy and my privilege to do what I'm doing. Um, and I thank you for that opportunity. Any joys or concerns? Ruby? I just have a joy and a concern. I have a great grandson who's been in the house of us since he was born last mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. August 31st. His oldest is on the outside with Bobby. And hopefully, we're, we're going to be getting coming home in maybe this month sometime before November, we hope. So um, I thank you for the prayers that you have. Yes, but I'm praying that they will come because, you know, you can see a little bit of hospital, so 
Absolutely. And his name was Peter, correct? Peter. All right. Well, prayers, um, praises that he's having an opportunity to come home, but we will continue to pray that everything goes well and he continues to grow and gain strength. Thank you. Lou? Yes, that was very exciting. So we'll lift up the sports teams. And I want to also lift up students as well, since we have quite a few here today. Um, but that is, that is a wonderful joy. Congrats to them. Any others? I have a couple I would like to share. Um, I would like to lift up Julie Irvin um, from Rankin. She had a successful knee replacement surgery recently, um, but we just learned the other day that she has a crushed tendon um, in her knee, which I don't know what that's like, but it sounds extremely painful. So if we could continue, the knee itself, from what I'm told, is good, um, but she's dealing with this crushed tendon now. So if we could keep Julie in our prayers for, for no pain and for healing, um, that, would be, that would be wonderful. Um, I would also like to lift up Jerry Kay and her family. Um, her son-in-law, Ernie, recently passed away. So I'd like to continue to pray for them and lift them up as they deal with um, his, his loss and grief during this time. Just know that we all love you very much and lift you guys up. Um, and then I'd also like to, to share a message this morning. Um, this is on behalf of Ellie. For those of you who haven't heard, Ellie Nolan's cancer has returned, and due to the type and locations, she has decided to discontinue treatment. Please hold Ellie close to your heart in prayer for peace and comfort as she faces this journey ahead. So Ellie, just know that we love you very much, and we are going to continue to lift you up in prayer and be here for you. Are there any others? Jerry Kay? I just want to say the whole family thanks you for your support and thank you. Just your love and support. Thank you. And thank you. Absolutely. If there are no others, we will go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and merciful God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come together, two churches worshiping as one this morning. Lord, this is such a blessing. Lord, we thank you. I thank you for all of these, these wonderful people here this morning, in person, joining us online as well. Um, Lord, this is just a testament to how worship and love of you has no boundaries and can go anywhere. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you for this. And Lord, you are a God who knows us so intimately and so well and who, whose love is beyond comprehension. And we're just so grateful to be loved by you. And with this, we know that our prayers, our joys, our concerns will be heard by you, Lord. So we want to take this opportunity to lift them all up to you today. Gracious God, we have few people who have been dealing with some health issues, and you know this, you are aware, but we just want to lift them up to you today. Lord, for Julie, we ask that you please bring comfort, please take away her pain as she is trying to heal and recover during this time. Lord, we also want to lift up Ellie. Please help her to know how much her church family loves her, and supports her, and how, most of all, Lord, you, you are love, and we just pray that you wrap your arms around her this morning to bring her peace and comfort. And gracious God, for little Peter, it is such a joy that he will be coming home soon. This little guy has been in such a battle, but Lord, you've been with him every step of the way, and we thank you for that, and we just want to continue to pray for him to grow to get stronger, and to be able to come home to be with his family. 
And gracious Lord, we also want to pray for the family of Ernie. We know that his recent passing is, is heavy. Grief is always heavy. And gracious Lord, we just want to lift up his family and loved ones to you today and ask for your outpouring of love and grace and mercy. Bring them comfort during this time. And Lord, we, we've had some wonderful joys in the past couple of days. The boys' football, the girls' volleyball, different wonderful events taking place in, in both communities. Seeing the joy on children's faces as they go trick-or-treating during this time. Lord, we just thank you for that. We thank you for all of these chances to enjoy our lives, to live fully, and to enjoy what you have given us. And Lord, for any other unspoken prayer requests, joys, concerns, challenges, whatever they are, Lord, we bring them to you and we lay them at your feet. And we just pray for your loving kindness and faithfulness over all of these today. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you do. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed, O you who answer prayer. To you all flesh come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. <laughs> Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. By your strength, you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You promise the people with grain. For you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and breathing excuse me, blessing, its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow, the hills gird themselves with joy, the meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valleys deck themselves with grain, they shout and sing for joy. This is the word of the Lord to the people of God. And now we enter a time of offering, we tithe to show how awesome our God is. God owns all. Everything on earth and beyond is holy to him. When we tithe, we offer up to him what is his and show that we recognize this ownership as a constant blessing upon us all.
God of the universe, you were with us at the beginning of our lives, and you will be by our side when we draw our last breath. In between, we struggle through life, too often trying to find our way based on our own wants and desires. In our giving to you this day, may you bless us so that we might better keep our eyes focused on you, that one day we might be able to echo your servant Paul as he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who loved us even to the cross. Amen. Paul is in prison. He has been in prison for a while now, and he is writing letters to the various churches. He also has written two letters to one of his protégés, Timothy. And this is his final one. He knows that his end is coming, that the time for, for being here on this earth is, is just about gone. And so he has some closing advice for Timothy. This is from the second letter of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6 through 8, and 16 through 18. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we hear today's message, I'd like to introduce another special piece of music that Sue is going to play for us, and it is Hallelujah. Please be in an attitude of prayer and reflection.
thank you so much for offering up your talent worship. Let's pray as we begin today's message. Spirit of God, enlighten our hearts to the reality of divine presence in our midst. Let our worship be pleasing in your sight so that our gathering is an experience of deep communion with you and one another. Please bless the reading, teaching, and preaching of this message and all who hear it today. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is our prayer. Amen. Well, hello again and welcome to our fifth Sunday fellowship on this fifth Sunday of October. It is so wonderful to see everyone here this morning in person for worship and online as well. I just love that we've started this tradition of coming together on the fifth Sunday of the month to be with brothers and sisters in Christ whom we don't see all that often at times. And it's such an awesome opportunity to bring our two churches together to worship, and I'm so thankful for this. Now, as Mary so wonderfully mentioned this morning, we're coming to the end of Paul's last words. And it's been interesting to read and think about this particular letter, given the context that Paul is in. Now, he penned many of his letters while locked up in chains in prison. But this was his last before his imminent death, and he knew it. What strikes me in the tone of this letter is how seemingly ready he is to move on to that next step which is moving on to heaven. He said, as for me, I'm already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Now, Paul's words here are a great example of someone who is confident in life after death. He's not nervous about what awaits him because of his strong faith that he has cultivated over the years. Now, I want to draw attention to a phrase that Paul used in this passage. He said he was already being poured out as a libation and getting ready for his time to come. When we talk about the ancient times and the offerings people used to make to God, we think many times of the animal sacrifices that were done. But drink offerings, namely wine being poured out, were also used as sacrifices to the Lord. So as Paul continues on in this part of the passage, he is sharing how he has poured out his life as an offering to the Almighty Lord. In Paul's context, he is reaffirming that he has run his race and kept the faith, and he was ready for what would come next, eternal life. You see, he knew that living in this world is temporary, and we will not receive earthly rewards that last. Our true reward, our everlasting reward, is in heaven, being in the presence of God, living with Jesus. He kept the faith so he would receive the crown of righteousness upon entering eternity for himself and also for others. Paul is uttering these words as his death awaits him. But I want to think about this idea of pouring ourselves out while we are still here on earth, walking in the callings that the Lord has on each of our lives. So what does it mean to pour ourselves out, as Paul mentioned? What does it mean in the Christian context? When Paul said he poured himself out as an offering to God, I believe that he emptied himself to be full of Jesus. He lived his life in such a way to honor the Lord and the grace and mercy he bestows to our children, to his children, excuse me. Paul was content to know what was coming next for him after death, and he was not worried and was aiming to share this with his protege, Timothy, as he was facing challenges in his own ministry. 
Paul wrote the first set of verses we heard today before his death. He ran the race, fought the good fight, and through it all kept the faith. I think these verses for us today are challenging us all. They're challenging us to live and to live as fully as possible while we are here on earth. To offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God, offering to let our lives be a part of his ultimate plan for here on earth. And to keep this faith as the foundation of our lives. So when we do have to deal with challenges that seem impossible or insurmountable, faith is at the forefront leading the way. The United Methodist um, Discipleship Ministries site says the following. It says, to let faith, to let Jesus be the measure by which our lives are measured. We keep the faith when we live it, every day. We keep the faith when we don't set it aside when the choices get difficult. We keep the faith when challenged by divisiveness or hatred and prejudice. We don't set it aside to go along and get along. We risk security and privilege by keeping the faith. We keep the faith by listening to and leaning into the words of Jesus, by looking at his life as the model for our own. We keep the faith even when others seem to be swayed by something less than the faith of Jesus. Paul, facing the end of his life, declares that he has kept the faith. We, facing another day of living and choosing and leading, declare the same. So this begs the question for each of us to reflect upon. Are we living our lives so that they are offerings to the Lord? Are we pouring ourselves out in faith now so that when we come to the end of our lives, we can confidently know that we've run the race and kept the faith? We have the opportunity to live our lives as offerings to God, to honor him and thank him for what he's done. So when we do face death, we can be confident in our meeting with Jesus. It's a call to live fully, to pour out and run the race, fight the good fight, and keep the faith. This pouring out of our lives is an opportunity to fill them up with more of Jesus. This pouring out is a form of sacrifice in itself. And I think it can be argued that it's part of our purpose while we're here, filling ourselves up with Jesus and then serving others. Jesus' life was a form of pouring out for all of us. Larry Stockstill writes the following on his site. He says, I have to prepare myself to be poured out by everyday prayer, Bible reading, reading great books, and learning conversations. I take in. Then I am ready at the precise moment to make a major impact when I pour out. And when we fill ourselves with Jesus and pour out as an offering, we will always stay full. Stockstill also writes, when you pour out, you will always stay full. People who hoard their gifts, their finances, their talents, their spare time, never seem to have enough. God will replenish. And God will replenish because he is the source of all good things. And Paul reminds us all of this in the second set of verses we heard today. Life is hard. It will wear us out if we try to do it on our own. Paul wrote, At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. Now the Lord stands by our sides, even when we may not feel it. Paul dealt with so much trouble and persecution, but he was confident in the Lord's presence the entire time. 
This second set of verses reaffirm how when we pour ourselves out, when we hold back nothing and give it all to God and truly rely on God, he opens the door into a new way of living. We who are called to give everything find that there is more of everything than we knew because of the one who stood by us the whole time. God will always give us the strength to do what he's commanded. But this will require us to keep the faith, step out into faith, accept change, challenge the status quo, work for justice and equality, and challenge power and privilege. Living life poured out changes us, and then it changes the world. And God is our source of strength, and without him, we couldn't do this on our own. And life won't always be easy, but living life poured out as an offering for him will make us ready to be used and rescued by him. Paul references being rescued from the lion's mouth. Now, whether that's literal or not, we don't quite know. But what we do know is that we will not go through life unscathed. We will have bumps, bruises, hurdles. But when we live poured out, when we live the faith as Paul had, we will be rescued. As the discipleship ministry site says again, the rescue is a relationship that never wavers, a presence that is real and felt and claimed. The rescue is an identity that is found in living poured out as a libation. We find who we are as we give ourselves away. We hold on to our true essence when we spend ourselves in the cause of Christ. We are poured out so that glory is given to the one for whom we pour. And there we find the joy in living fully. So as we near the end of our worship service today, let's remember to live our lives fully as an offering to the most high and mighty king, pouring ourselves out to fill ourselves up with the presence of our Savior as we run our race and keep the faith. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness to us in the difficult times. Help each of us to run with perseverance the race that you set before us and to finish that race well with your help. Help us to keep the faith and the teaching that you have entrusted to us and pass it on faithfully to those in the next generation who can teach others also. We know you will be with us to the end. We know that your grace is sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will now sing our final hymn um, of our worship service this morning, All Creatures of Our God and King. It is number 62 in the red hymnals, and it will be on the screen as well. And we are singing verses 1 through 5. So I invite you to please stand as you're able at this time.
Before we go enjoy our fellowship time this morning, I'd like to leave you with this blessing. Our gather worship has ended, but our race goes on. The faith we celebrate here continues to be the faith we keep out there. As you have poured yourself out in worship, in song, and in prayer, in fellowship, and in unity, now may we go to pour ourselves out in service to the world God so loves. Let the church be the witness that God is at work in the world. Go with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping today.